the way, meaning the prescribed method of redemption, and the truth. Now that's a word to all the cults out there. This is a cult eliminator. <laughs> Jesus knew that his divinity is beyond human understanding and is revealed only to believers who are enabled by God to search for this truth. I am the way, the truth, you can be seated, and the life. The life being the correct image for us to duplicate. No one, no one, I don't care how much money you got in the bank. <laughs> I don't care what title you have in the front of your name. No one comes to the Father except through me. Because you have known me, redemption, truth, image, grace, <laughs> because you have known me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him. In fact, you have seen him. Now, you've got to understand what is being said here. You have seen the Father. Uh, and the Bible clearly says that no man can see God the Father and live. So, 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 so Christ here is making a statement of declaration that what he has manifested by his life here on earth has clearly manifested God the Father cross-reference. I need to read a John chapter 1 verses 15 to 18. John chapter 1 verses 15 to 18. John chapter 1 15 to 18. John bare witness of him and cried saying, This was he of whom I spake. <laughs> he that cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me, and of his fullness have mm. all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Mm. No man has seen God at any time. All right. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the <laughs> Father, he had declared him. That declaration is a manifestation of a life lived. Jesus Christ. This morning we are continuing on in the series on simplifying the confusion in the doctrine of the Trinity, part two. <laughs> because the Father is God, but he is not the Son. The Son is God, but he is <laughs> not the Father. And the Holy Spirit is God, <laughs> but he ain't the Father and he ain't the Son. Now, uh, I'm certain that almost everyone has heard that on the front door and opened it or uh, talked through the window to the persistent evangelists of the Jehovah Witnesses. And if you have not yet confronted them, then I am certain that it will not be long until you do. Especially when we consider the thousands of Jehovah Witnesses that come, I think, annually to our town here in Kissimmee for their month-long English and Hispanic crusade. There is only so much ducking and dodging you can do <laughs> before we get into a place or a situation where we have to stand up as spiritual eagles and shed the light of the truth of the gospel of God and who he is. In order to rebuke the spirit of error and save even some of our friends and loved ones that may have fallen victim either to the cult of the Jehovah Witness or a wide diversity of other cults, we have a charge to speak the light of the truth of the gospel of exactly who the God of our beginning is. He is our God that changes not. He is Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. But through the process of revelation in our walk with him, we come gradually 
to a better understanding of our Elohim. And by our understanding can then speak truth, light, and life for the deliverance of our loved ones that have been lost in cults or that are now being targeted by them and may be lost because of our lack of knowledge of God's word and the revelation of himself to us. In my last message in the series of Genesis 1-1, as we explored the consideration of the source of our origin, as we focused in on the personhood of the source to enable us with all reverence and through the light of God's word to understand the manifested divine personality, we are able to see from the very first verse of the Bible that God has revealed himself to be triune, meaning one God in three persons, not three gods. As in the beginning, the God that created the heavens and the earth, this God that Genesis 1-1 tells us initiated beginnings is manifested by a trinity. As we translate the original Hebrew word of Elohim, from the God of Genesis 1, and Elohim is in the plural, and the word of Elohim is the name usually given in the scriptures to the ever-blessed Trinity by which they represent themselves as being under the obligation of an oath to perform certain conditions. Now, saints, it is vitally important for us to understand the triune, trinitarian nature and truth of our God, as this is the foundation of our understanding and our belief in him, and as Yeshua, Jesus, told the woman at the well, the hour is coming, and now is for us to worship God in spirit and in truth. It is also on the issue of the doctrine of the truth of our trinitarian God, where almost all of the cults find their differences with our beliefs with regards to the reality of an understanding of the Trinity. Now, let's take a look at some of uh, the many points of opposition that the cults raise. In literature from the Jehovah's Witnesses, Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania, they call for their followers to outright reject the Trinity because, and I'm quoting here, there can be no compromise with God's truth. Hence, they say, to worship God on his terms means to reject the Trinity doctrine. <laughs> One of the principal points that they raise is that God is not a God of confusion. And the understanding of the doctrine of the Trinity is beyond the grasp of human reason. Jehovah Witnesses contend that not even the idea of the Trinity is taught in Scripture. And they claim that this is apostasy, meaning a complete abandonment of one's religious faith. But what they don't realize is that by their denouncing the doctrine of the reality of the Trinity, they remove the divinity, the Godhood, from the individual persons of the Godhead. He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But you know, they are not alone in their zealous efforts. Let's look at some of the ridiculous beliefs about the persons of the Trinity that some of the cults believe so that we can uh, best know how to stand in wisdom and defend our own faiths and our own beliefs and maybe even snatch some of our loved ones from going to hell. <laughs> Amen? Even God the Father is not spared by the cults from being robbed of his eternal divinity as the Mormons, also called the Latter-day Saints, believe and teach that God the Father was once a man. 
<laughs> but he progressed to Godhood. Uh, from our pamphlet on Christianity, cults, and religions, it is revealed that Mormons believe that God the Father had a physical body. <laughs> As does his wife, whom they consider to be the heavenly mother. The Mormons do not believe in the Trinity and say that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three separate gods. The Mormons believe and teach that worthy men may one day become gods themselves. Now, when we think of the Mormons, one of the greatest representation of them is the Mormon tabernacle choir who sing beautifully and whose music has crossed over into mainstream appreciation because of the quality of it. Mormons do not like it when their church is labeled as a cult by Christians. <laughs> this bothers them greatly because they want to be accepted as Christians by the Christian community and they spend a great deal of time and money on public relations <laughs> with the aim of portraying a loving, family-oriented, non-condemning Christian denomination. But saints of God, how can we, us and the Mormons, or any other cult, walk together in unity unless we be agreed? <laughs> I love Kumbaya, but I always tell you, there is a time to sing Kumbaya. Not in the middle of an argument. Could you imagine if you and I were arguing and I say, let's just hug. That don't make no sense. Let's deal with the issue at hand. Any doctrine that does not insist that the Lord our God is one, Amen. believing on the unity of the substance of the Godhead, or that divides worship between God and any other, is a false doctrine. Any religion or doctrine that imagines God coming into existence rather than being God eternally, has eternity has no beginning and it has no end. Any cult that does this is not capable of directing people towards a true understanding or relationship with our God, Hello Him, the ever existing one. Psalm 90, verses 1 to 4, tells us of His eternal nature. He is Alpha and Omega Saints, the beginning and the end. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return, ye children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. So, saints, God was always God. From everlasting to everlasting, he is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. The devil was deceived. <laughs> And he tries to deceive others. His ambition blinded him. The devil has deceived the Mormons to believe that our everlasting God was once a man that progressed to Godhood. And as we know, God the Father to be a spirit without physical body, we also know from the revelation of God's word that in creation we see the manifested nature, character, and role of the three persons of the Godhead and not a heavenly mother, <laughs> as the Mormons believe. We must always see the individuality of the persons. One God in three persons. 
not three gods. Because when we remove the divinity, the godhood, from any of the individuals of the Trinity, we are not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And as our prayers and our worship then becomes of no effect, <laughs> and we are deceived by the devil, he will block us from our inner court fellowship with God. And our minds will be confused with lies. So when you're going to pray for people that are lost in cults, you got to pray for the Holy Spirit to bind up that spirit of confusion and to bind up their heirs and spirit from receiving lies. As I focus on our understanding of the central doctrine of the Trinity, as God has revealed his trial nature from the very first verse of the Bible, in the beginning God, Hello, him. There are many cults that are opposed to the truth of the triune God, like the nation of Islam that is currently attracting so many of our young black men by deception, teaching on the surface that there is one God, Allah, a black man. But there are millions of Allahs that have lived and died since creation. Collectively, they say, that the black race is God and Master Wallace D. Fard, F-A-R-D, Fard, the founder of their religion, is the supreme Allah and Savior. The nation of Islam, like the other cults, destroy the Godhead by negating the divinity of the individual persons. The third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, is not part of the belief of many cults. And where he is acknowledged, he is seen or considered, as the Jehovah Witness describe him, not to be God, but an invisible active force from Jehovah. <laughs> With regards to the divinity of the second person of the Trinity, Yeshua, Jesus, his divinity is also stripped from him through error, deception, and deceit. I have specifically mentioned three very popular cults. The Jehovah Witness, the Mormons, and the Nation of Islam. Let us now analyze what they say, believe, and teach about Jesus. <laughs> Jehovah Witnesses teach outright that Jesus is not God. They teach that before he lived on earth, he was Michael the Archangel. The Mormons teach that Jesus is a separate God from the Father, Elohim. They say that he was created as a spirit child by the Father and Mother in Heaven that is the elder brother of all spirit beings. The Mormons further teach that Jesus' body was created through sexual union between Elohim and Mary. They teach that he was married and his death does not provide full atonement of all sin, but does provide everyone with resurrection. How can you have one without having the other? <laughs> the, the nation of Islam also removes the deity of Christ and even throw his integrity into question. Officially, the nation of Islam can fool some that may have grown up in the church because they claim that Jesus is a sinless prophet of Allah. But privately, they teach a completely different thing as they say Jesus was born from adultery between Mary and Joseph, who was already married to another woman. You know... They are no worse than the wayward Jews of his day, of Christ's day, who also called into question the legitimacy of his birth when in John chapter 8, verse 41, <laughs> they re replied to him in a heated debate that he was basically <laughs> born of fornication. <laughs> you see, they made a slanted suggestion that the legitimacy of his birth was in question. But saints, you gotta watch people with snide remarks. 
A lot of people, they come to us and they make snide remarks. And they get you, they tempt you to laugh at them. I don't laugh at people that make snide remarks. Because <laughs> there is an agenda that they hope to accomplish. The nation of Islam teaches privately that Jesus was not crucified but stabbed in the heart by a police officer and that he is still buried in Jerusalem. They say that prophecies of Jesus' return refer to their founder, Master Ford, or their former dead leader, Elijah Muhammad, or to their current leader, Louis Farrakhan. Now, of course, saints, from a uh, study of God's word, we can clearly see the error of these cultic beliefs. But just for the sake of perfect clarity, let us rebuke these lies with God's truth. John chapter 1. That's the best way to rebuke lies is with the word of God. I need a reader. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Go over to Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the, this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. See, we do not rebuke lies with opinions. We rebuke lies, confusion, and deception with the word of God. Even though we must fully believe that our one God, Elohim, is triune, it still does not make it easy for us to understand how three individual persons can, in essence, be described as one. Or even in the individual roles that they play with regards to creation, how we can see and believe in the role of submission of the second God the Son person, the th and uh, the third God, the Holy Spirit, person of the Godhead, but yet still believe in their equality. I will address these two topics in my continuation of the series of the personhood in Trinity. But this morning, I want to end this message that has focused on the dif difficulty in understanding the Trinity and has shown how the devil will bring error and lies to fill in the gap of our misunderstanding or ignorance. The devil will fill in the blanks of our questions that go unanswered. So don't just gloss over things. Answer difficult questions because in these last days we must be able to stand up not just with the anointing of God but with the wisdom of God. 
We have to be able to destroy the focus of the devil to destroy true worship of our Trinitarian God. I believe that the church's full understanding of the Trinity has remained a mystery for so many people because they have not taken the time to experience God in the different dimensions of his relationship to us. As the Apostle Paul reveals it in his letter to the church at Corinth, Corinthians 13 and 14, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> The marvelous grace that enables us through repentance and acceptance of Christ's work of atonement at Calvary to receive the love of God, which towards us, his creation, seeks our life abundantly and our perfect peace from our understanding of his love and his will for our benefit. How could we help? but be that which he has created us to be and do, to worship him from the depths of our being with the fulfillment of that void that all of us have in us, in our inner man, the depths of our soul uh, being a place where only God's love can reach us and make us complete. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost after we have received and embraced Christ's grace and God's love to become his living sanctuary where we are meant to commune with him between the wings of the cherubim of the ark of God's new covenant the cults would have us to believe that because there is a degree of difficulty or a challenge Posed to many in our fully understanding the Trinity and the understanding of the Trinity has been titled a mystery as it is an area where too few churches explore and they even chalk it up to a mystery that is meant to be left to the dimension of our faith. But our faith must stand on a firm foundation of the light of God's word. In other words, we must understand what we believe in. <laughs> the revelation of our Bible was written from the experience of our forefathers. Walk and talk with God. And brought to us in the fullness of time. To enable us to get to know this multidimensional, wonderful, all-powerful, all-sufficient God. He is a wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. Since the church has by and large left the understanding of the Trinity to being titled as a mystery and to that which was meant to be death to the dimension of our faith, then the cults have drawn the conclusion that if it is a mystery, then it must not be true. <laughs> But God's intention for us was and is to be strengthened in our faith and understanding by our understanding of his person. As we that were made in his image and take the time to pursue him and take the time to, to, to look more like him and then mystery becomes revelation as we are transformed by our revelation of just who God is. This morning, let us end as Paul did in his letter to the Corinthians, with our searching ourselves to ensure that our grace from Christ is in place. And remember that this grace is able to wash away the filth of any past or present sin. Let us ensure that we are vessels with our blocks in our receiving God's love so that the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit has full and complete control of our temples. Amen. Amen. Lord, prepare me.